I was pretty young when I first started exploring all those woods from Penkethley, that wonderful string of woods of northern Pembrokeshire, which is now a sack, which extends to Ticannell and then to the Gwaii. I started in 1979 and I had no idea what I was taking on. I'd only not long begun looking at lichens. It really opened my eyes to what an amazing place this was, what, which, you know, you can explore forever and find new sites in it. It's also been occupied by humans for such a long period of time. So that makes it extra interesting somehow. I was completely bamboozled because when I went, Frances Rose had recorded 170 species in about 1975. So we knew it was an important place, but by the time we'd finished, and we will never finish, there will still always be more species to find. We are over 400 now. Why did this happen? that to cannel supports such a diversity of species. So first of all, there's the diversity of habitats. So you've got, you know, you've got amazing, you've got sort of gladed woodland and moorland and outcrops. So the, the rock lichens are as interesting and as diverse as the tree lichens. That's why the numbers went up so much. But I suppose the other thing is, is that because it was such a rocky place and such an, a sort of difficult to farm, so it never got clear felled. So you've got that amazing, what we call ecological continuity. And that allows every niche and cranny to be occupied. And that's what the lichens do. Some lichens grow so slowly that they actually belong to another era. So we look at, at, at an environment from today, but actually the past is written into that environment too. Lichenology itself is not that ancient a, sub a subject, except they've always been remarked on, but people never understood where to put them. Are they plants? Are they animals? Are they, what are they? So they are a fascinating, organism because there are many different organisms well we are too but they're not just a fungus or an alga both are in them but we also discover now there are many different organisms in them so they're like a community and what you see is controlled by the fungus even in an urban area even in your garden you can find such a diversity of species but if I was talking about to cannel, wow, then the niches are amazing. You know, you have all the difference between the shaded rocks and the sunny rocks, between the rocks that have been a bird perch for years, so there's been bits of nitrogen dribbling down them, and then you get these special nitrogen-loving species as well. A single boulder will you provide you with all these different aspects. And that's the same for a tree as well. You know, for a tree from the tree trunk to the branches. Now the tree trunk is going to tell you what it was like to grow then, but the branches are telling you what it's like now. Almost because of all those features that I've told you, slow growing, you know, and occupying a lot of different places. So, these things have made them not only important for looking at changes over time, but also for looking at changes in our environment. So a lot of the stuff that I've been working on is about air quality and looking at how lichens respond to um, decreasing air quality, like the period of sulfur dioxide where they did disappear from our cities and uh, but now it's about nitrogen. So nitrogen is, unfortunately, it's abundant in rural areas as ammonia, but it's also abundant in our urban areas and all along our roads as nitrogen dioxide. And both of these add 
a lot of nitrogen into the atmosphere. It's not just like fertilizer in the ground, it's in the atmosphere. Only a few lichens are tolerant of that, but some are. So this is what we've been monitoring. We've been monitoring the change between the, um, the nitrogen um, sensitive species, a lot of those into cannel, and the nitrogen tolerant species, which come in with the addition of fertilizer, the addition of, of um, intensive agricultural management, mm -hmm. and also along our roads. I always think to cannel was my first learning about, also particularly about the relationship between humans and what man did in the environment. So management and what effect it had on the rest of the organisms. So that's not just lichens, that's plants and everything. So we look at, at, at an environment from today, but actually the past is written into that environment too. And that's what I learned to look for. One of the things that keeps the cannel so good is that we still allow grazing, which keeps this open wood pasture which is one of the most important things about the cannel. And if you contrast that with some of the sites in the Gwine, where suddenly there was a grant to fence your woodlands and keep the stock out, there the ivy has grown up the trunks, more vegetation has grown, so shading all the lichen communities. So we're actually losing some of the lichens in the Gwine where we've fenced woodland, whereas we've managed to maintain the habitats for lichens mm -hmm. at Tucanel. There is a whole story about Liberia pulmonaria because Liberia was in Tucanel. And it was very funny when I started work there and I still knew Francis Rose. And Francis was determined that I just hadn't found it you know, because I'd started a few years later. But we now think that the ash tree that it was on had gone. So, because they were taking trees at that time, it wasn't uh, SSSI then. Mm -hmm. So, the interesting thing is we transplanted material from Stackpole back to an ash tree at Tucannel. And I did it with a Swiss lichenologist who was well known for his transplanting techniques. And it more or less disappeared. But you won't believe it, it's reappeared and it's there now. So um, it's reappeared on the, on the tree that we transplanted it on, but not in the same place. So, um, so it's obviously established itself through the propagules and started off again. Ah, well, this is the most interesting thing about lichens. We think that they can survive long periods, almost not as the lichen that we know, but as a fungus with, a, with um, um, an algal partner somehow, but they haven't made it to being a lichen. Actually, funnily enough, the other wow moment for me was finding Liberia again when I thought it had completely disappeared. Because the, the, the point was, when we transplanted them, we, although we protected them as, much, as well as we could, we transplanted them at sort of, you know, where we could reach them, middle height. But that's where the slugs can get them too. And the slugs are very happy at Tacanal. And, and we, it was as if we'd provided their favourite meal. <laughs> so they demolished all our liberias. But we do know that lichens can reproduce from slugs faecal pellets. So they go through the digestive system of the slug, come out the other end. And that's another possibility. I still am hugely emotionally attached to the cannel because that's where I learnt how to look at lichens. I learnt things which I've applied the rest of my life, but I also learnt to look for how humans had related 
to their environment. We no longer live in woodlands, but they did live in woodlands. They did live in Tacanal and they did use it in many, many different ways. And the lichens have still survived. So we can manage our environment for the very best for both us and the natural world.